Hi, Dr. Mike Carberry with Advanced Medical Integration, uh, bringing you another podcast, and I'd like to talk about scaling your business. Um, it's important, I'm very interested in, in doctors scaling their business, especially doctors that we work with, because now is an important time to scale their business. Um, what, we're refer what I'm referring to is the crisis that's going on in this country with the opioid abuse. Our last uh, podcast was about that. Um, the reason I bring the attention to this is we need to scale our businesses. We need to grow larger. Co doctors that are offering drug-free solutions or uh, surgery of helping avoid drugs and surgery as a solution to chronic degenerative arthritis is a very, very, very important thing. We have actually become an unhealthy nation. We've actually become a weak nation because what we're doing is we're medicating everything and any pain we have, we're medicating it even at the expense of getting better. Um, if you take an anti-inflammatory, it decreases your ability to heal. If you take an opioid, it makes you not even care if you're in pain and unfunctional in society. So that's not good for us or for our community. So what we're trying to do is help doctors who have alternatives to these types of treatments do better. So we just had our recent mastermind group in um, uh, North Carolina at the uh, Biltmore Estate. That was an awesome place, by the way. And uh, we talked about this. Um, a person who decided to come help me um, help promote this idea to our clients is Grant Cardone, who knows an awful lot about uh, expanding a business and, and 10xing, if you're familiar with that term, 10xing the statistics of a business, making it 10 times greater. And this is a guy who definitely knows how to do that. You know, I went to um, one of my uh, uh, colleagues, Dr. Dave Morris, a good friend of mine, went to Grant Cardone's first growth con three years ago. And he had like, I don't know, 1,300 people there, 1,100 people, something like that. The following year, I went because I heard it was so good. And this time, they had 11,000 people there, some ridiculous number like that. So this year, we went back to his growth con because that one last year was so phenomenal. We just went last month to his third growth con, and Grant rented out Marlin Stadium and had 33,000 people attending. I got to tell you, just sitting in that audience, we were right down on the floor close to the stage, my wife and I, and looking around and seeing all those people was just unbelievable to see that many people interested in scaling their business. So I'm going to talk to doctors, medical doctors, chiropractors, nurse practitioners, anybody who's in healthcare who wants to run a business that is looking to scale that business because what you're doing is helping people get well without drugs and without surgery. The difference between our clinics and other clinics is that we are helping patients to improve their function to relieve their symptoms. That is a much better way than just covering up their symptoms with a drug, like an opioid or an anti-inflammatory. Um, if you help improve function, even to any degree, and that patient has less pain and can do more that's better not just for that patient, but that patient's family, that patient's neighborhood, that patient's society, and us as a country, and us as a world. You know, it's, it's very important that we help people to be able to function. So scaling your business is extremely important. We look at this and we go, how do you scale a business? Well, one, you, the, the owner of the business, the entrepreneur, the person who is who's running that business has to completely understand what their purpose is for that business. And that purpose should not be how to make money. That purpose should be, what am I gonna to do to improve society? I'm not gonna get very esoteric on you, but if you look at the, the free market, the free market is not a greedy thing. The free market is, hey, I can do something very good for society, so I'm gonna do more of it, and I will get rewarded by society for it. I am all about that. Just so you know, I am not a socialist, and I am not a communist. I am a capitalist, and a very proud capitalist. We work in a community, we, we live in a society where if you do something good for society, you will be reward, rewarded for it. If you ever read Wallace Waddle's book, The Science of Getting Rich, he says it very plainly. As long as what you're offering your customer is more valuable than what they're paying you for it, you will get rich. Let me repeat that as long as what you are offering your customer, or in your, this case, your patient, is more valuable than what they're paying you, you will get rich. And the reason for that is because they're gonna recognize it as a good thing, they're gonna recommend other, other people for it, and that's what we're trying to do. We know that the services we offer can scale. Let me talk about the tipping point phenomenon. If you've ever heard of the tipping point, point phenomenon, 
basically you don't have to get 100% of the society to agree to something. If you get 15% or more of the society to look at a product or service and recognize its value and start to use it, the rest of society just starts gravitating towards it. So that's what we need to do. Um, chiropractic has been running around 8 to 10% acceptance by society. How do we get the other 5%? Well, the way we get it is we, we work with medical practitioners, not by selling out our souls and selling out our, our philosophies, but finding the ones that have the similar philosophy. <coughs> when I got involved in integrated practice, I was floored with the number of medical practitioners that were looking for a less drug-oriented approach. Now, to me, I understand that there's a lot of those people out there, probably more than half. Um, but a lot of other chiropractors and naturopaths, they might not recognize that. So working together doesn't mean selling your soul. Working together means becoming more powerful. See, the people that are selling the drugs don't want us to work together. They want us to be isolated. They want us to be worried about our, you know, getting in trouble and people come down on us. And, you know, uh, to divide and conquer has been their, their approach. So what we're trying to do is say, you know what, we don't need to fight anybody or conquer anybody, but we need to stop the fact that so many Americans are getting put on dangerous drugs. That, you know, if you look at the work of Dr. Barbara Starfield, who wrote a, a, an article and said in um, the year 2000 that the healthcare system in this country was so bad, it was actually the third leading cause of death in the United States, the healthcare system. Um, if you don't know her name, you should look her up. But she had an article published in the Journal of the American Medical Association uh, in July of 2000, and it was about our ailing healthcare system and about, you know, is our healthcare system effective or not? And, and that was one of the things she came up with. So what we're trying to do is get doctors to recognize to do this right, they have to have a business side. They cannot just be a clinician that wants to help people, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you need an entrepreneur to make it go right. In the free market system, you got to get the, the, the desire for that product to get that product out to the, to the country. You have to get people to recognize its value. you got to cut through all the hype that is put out there to discredit services like that to get people not to get it. So how do you do that? Well, let me talk about that. So the owner of the business has to know what their purpose and philosophy is. What we find is a lot of people don't even know that. Um, if, if you recognize that, all successful businesses, according to Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, he said one of the common traits of successful business people is they have a strong central purpose. And they make sure their employees, their creditors, their vendors, their customers, they all know it, that the public knows what the purpose of this company is. What a better purpose than trying to help people get well without drugs and without surgery. That's our purpose. So um, you have to understand your purpose and philosophy. Then you have to have a way to get there. Now your purpose might be bigger than just what your job is or what your company is. Um, purpose is not why is my company here. Purpose is why are you here? So then you got to say, well, how does my company fit into that purpose? And this is, we did drills like this in our mastermind sessions about how to, to become more aware of these things. Um, once you realize that that company is there to help you achieve your purpose and it's not your whole life's purpose, you know, who wants to work and make that their purpose in life? Certainly, I love my work and I put a lot of effort into it, but I also have a family and I also have friends and I also have, you know, interests and, and things I like to do. So <coughs> I want to be able to enjoy those things. At the same time, I want this, my companies that I have, because I have several, to help me move towards changing this purpose of making drugs less of the option and function, improve function is really the outcome. What we're looking for is a healthcare system that is based on improved function, not reduced symptoms. Because you can reduce symptoms by shooting the patient. That's not going to work out good, but you would definitely, they would stop hurting. So what we're trying to do is say, let's see if we can improve function so that they don't have to keep taking a drug, which is like shooting them with a very slow bullet that slowly kills them. Um, that's what we're trying to do. So the next thing we do, we, we were teaching with our clients is, you know, one of the things you have to do is you have to be able to manage time. A lot of people, you know, you hear it all the time. Well, I can't do that. I don't have time. Or we tell P uh, doctors, you know, if you're going to have staff helping you to fulfill your purpose, where you're not going to do it all yourself, you have to be able to delegate and to delegate eff effectively so that they can perform in a manner that is um, on a par with how you would perform, you have to train. And the biggest objection I hear to training is I don't have time. 
And what we talked about at our mastermind is if you don't have time to train, you don't have time to do anything because training is how you buy time. And people who are successful know how to master time and create time. So that was a very um, essential point of scaling your business. How do, you, how do you run your schedule? So we went over drills on how to run your schedule. My wife working in the hospital was exposed to lots of different methods of <coughs> doing a, a time assessment on employees because she was a supervisor of the physical therapy department of just about every hospital she ever worked in. So we were teaching this to our clients. <coughs> Excuse me. We were also looking at, okay, so then how do you measure the effect you're creating? And when you do that, a lot of times people go, well, I look at my stats. I look at, you know, how many uh, care plans did I sell? And uh, how, many, how much money did I bring in? And how many employees do I have? And what's my overhead? And how many people complete their program? And so forth. And these are hard, tangible numbers that you can measure. And certainly they are important. But they're not the whole picture. The rest of the picture is, well, what is, you know, I'm a marketer. I have a marketing degree before I got my chiropractic degree. And in marketing, you look at what is the perception of your business by the public. And so if the perception is, you know, people came in and said, yeah, it was okay, but, you know, I didn't really get a whole lot out of it. Well, that's something you should know so you could fix that. You want people to come out of there going, wow, this was a great experience. This changed my life. I have a different viewpoint on health. And if you can't get that, <coughs> we will never change healthcare. Basically, to change any type of industry, you need to kind of disrupt it. You need to, um, instead of just going in and trying to say, hey, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, you got to be able to say, here's a better way. And that's what we believe we have. We have a better way that's less expensive, less invasive, and helps people improve their function. And we know that because we do our re-exams every two weeks, and um, we're testing their function every time we do it, comparing it to their physical abilities and their um, activities of daily living, which we did a thorough assessment on when they first started with our business. So we're measuring. And so that's a, a tangible thing, but you also want to know the perceptions, like your staff. You want to create a um, culture in your company where your staff are very motivated beyond that of a regular employee, but motivated to actually achieve and accomplish success in your company for you and for your company and for themselves. It's got to be a win-win. That is the true free market. So ways, we, we went over ways to assess what your staff think of you and your systems in your business and how your business actually functions, and then what your patients think of you and the results of your care plans and how that actually works. And then that way you can improve them. So we looked at that, and then we looked at how do you get the different aspects of your business to communicate together and to harmonize and to work together. For example, in a, <coughs> in a busy medical setting, um, you know, a chiropractor has how many, how many different services can you do? Well, you might say, well, I do adjustments, and I do decompression, and I do cold laser, and I do nutrition, and I do this and that and the next thing. That's great, but when you become a medical clinic, there's way more. So how do you coordinate, coordinate all that? Well, what we found is having a position like a traffic cop, which is a position we've had in our business for decades. Um, the traffic cop's job is to see what was ordered by the nurse practitioner or the MD that's supposed to happen that day. And they have meetings in the morning to figure that out um, before the shift starts. And then what happens is it's marked in the chart. So when the patient's progressing through, they report to the, case, or to the traffic cop who knows, oh, you need, this service was ordered, that's going to happen today. Or, oh, this service was ordered, but it's going to happen tomorrow. And they're directing the patient where they need to go so they get all the things necessary for the improvement of their um, function, of their outcome in your office. And when you do stuff like that, that's how you really um, rise to the top. you got to make sure that your clinic is running effectively, and here's the hard part, without you. If you set up a business that's going to run effectively without you, you have to have really good systems in there and train continually, have systems for training in place that you have continual training occurring so that that business can grow and scale. You cannot get a business to grow and scale just by you. You need help. And when you need help, you need systems, you need training, and you need to make sure all these different things match together. That's the, the road that, that it takes to scale. You got to have an essential purpose in your life. You got to see how that business fits into that purpose. You got to see what is your strategy to get that business to grow. Um, you got to have time to be able to do it all. You got to be able to measure your improvements and your outcomes. 
and then you got to be able to have a, a system of communication amongst your different departments so they can work together because now all those departments are representing you on a much larger scale. And your job eventually should move into the conductor of the orchestra, which is not an easy job either. And it needs the person who created the whole thing to know what the outcome is. That conductor, even though he's not even playing an instrument, probably has more influence on the outcome of how that song sounds than anybody else on that stage. So that would be you if you're the business owner. And that's one of the, some of the things we, we tackle with AMI. That was um, basically an outline of our master's seminars that we've had twice so far, once in Palm Springs, California in October, and then just recently we did one in um, uh, Asheville, North Carolina at the Biltmore State. We have another one coming up this summer on the beach or on a, uh, in a really nice uh, resort on the beach in Florida uh, in St. Pete. So again, we have our, our um, uh, convention coming up. Grant Cardone will be there to help us to explain why you should be willing to take the effort to scale your business and put these systems in place and grow your business so you can do more of what you do because that's what society needs. So I'm going to have help from Grant and man, I don't think I could help have help from a better person, a more capable person, a more purpose person. Um, we're also going to have Dr. John Rosa there speaking. Dr. John Rosa, uh, an affiliate or a surrogate for the White House Committee on Opioid Abuse and um, a doctor who used to be on the board at New York Chiropractic College for years, the only chiropractor who's on that panel in Washington, D.C. He's also a consultant to the DEA, the TSA, Homeland Security, and several other government agencies to help um, in the security of this country and in uh, drug enforcement. So he's going to be speaking. We're going to have a lot of other great guest speakers that we're going to unveil over the next couple of weeks. So if you're listening to this and you're a client, you need to click the link at the bottom and reserve your space at that convention. Uh, if you're not a client, you can attend without being a client. For the, uh, We just started doing this program, and it, it's received very well. But you do have to pay to be there because all of our clients uh, were told they can get this service, and they do. They get to come to these. Once you're a client, you can come to them forever. Um, we do two conventions a year. So if you're not a client and you want to attend, click that link, and someone will guide you on how to be able to sign up for that. And you can attend, and you can hear Grant Cardone speak, who is phenomenal. And you can hear all these other great speakers speaking and learn more about scaling your business in healthcare so you can move towards this direction. I'm Dr. Mike Carberry. Thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully I'll be coming to you soon with another podcast. Until then, take care.